with a positive attitude. And uh, as Pastor Walsh said, the Lord wants to encourage us through our trials, and oftentimes he encourages us 
through other people of us. We're temples of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord um, presents his case as through us as his ambassadors. And so uh, I wanted to put this phrasogram for Modesto Perez. Now, I have seen Modesto struggling through all kinds of things, trials and tribulations, and other hindrances that I won't go into. And through it all, he maintains a positive attitude. Amen. And in class, he's always asking questions, always asking for notes, and always seeking to get everything he can from the Word, because he doesn't want to miss out. And uh, and that encouraged me greatly. Can I get my glasses, Kevin? <laughs> Is that all true? Yeah, unfortunately, it's true. <laughs> How was your question, Pastor Jim? <laughs> what I wrote here was to Pastor Wall, praising God or praise God with me for Modesto Perez, who, regardless of any hindrance or obstacle that may come in his way, persists in trying his best to study and understand God's Word, the Holy Bible. Amen. He asks pertinent questions and truly seeks to comprehend everything that is discussed in classes and church services. Keep it up, Modesto. God has big blessings in store for you. Yeah. I also wrote a scripture on the top that says, Blessed is the man or woman who perseveres under trial, because when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been going through a lot of trials since I've been here, I mean, but I thank God for every day that, that I'm not uh, in DOC. You know, I've been, I did that for 15 years, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm not a heroin addict. I'm a former addict, and for the grace of God, he took that away from me. I don't have an urge to do any of that anymore. I'm glad that uh, I have a, a good family on my side who, who come to church with me and, and go to the outreach and cook food. I'm glad I got, I'm glad I got people like, like everybody in this room that, that knows me, that really, really knows who I am. And, and, and you know, I don't put a front up for nobody. I just let them know the truth, man. I let them know that hey, if, if, if uh, he can change, us, if he could change me, he, he, could, he could work on anybody, you know what I mean? And, and a crazy report from, from this pastor is really, that's what's up. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like where I was, I mean, I was that, he slowed down. I, I worry, want to understand what's really going on. It might not seem like it to a lot of our teachers, man, but I want to pick up everything because I want to help kids. Get off drugs, bro. I want amen, I want amen. to become a youth pastor, man. You know what I mean? I don't want I want to help kids that don't have the opportunity that, that I wish I had when I was younger. Don't wait to take 40 and 50 years to get to that point where I'm at right now. There's a lot of them out there, believe me, there's a whole bunch, they're all over the street. You look for them and they're lost. And, uh, as much as I can learn from this program and take it out with the streets, man, it's gonna be a blessing. And that just goes for everybody. You all can help kids, man. I mean, wherever you're calling this. He's gonna let you know. That's that's what he, he put in my heart. Is help these kids get off these these narcotics and, and off these shelters and off these streets. And that's that's, that's just what I want to do. And I, I it might not seem like I do a lot of things, but I I, I really want to know the word of God for real. I really do. Amen. And it's, it's pray for the governor to uh, change his access, man. Because without if if I come out of prison having access. I won't be going through all this. What I'm going through right now, I would have a straight pay to go to, to get my stomach ca ca taken care of. But I have to go through loops and tunnels and visions. I got to go through a lot of stuff just to, just to get a, a, a appointments and stuff. So, you know what I mean? Let's pray for that and hopefully that I can get some, some kind of medical care so I get my stomach done so I can get this taken care of because that's the only stronghold that got to be going on right now is my stomach. So with the... Uh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> now let's pray for him. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just pray. Yes. God, you're better than any welfare, access, Amen. anything else. Amen. And you can use that. You use doctors. In the different times, you just speak your word Amen. and heal them of their diseases. But the thing is, God, I believe you want us to simply trust you, not lean on any government government, any man-made program. So I just pray for my brother. Yes. God, whatever needs to be done in his body, we just pray that that happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Now here's a good example of a man that really had stomach problems. If you had known him about a month ago, he had a hernia out like this. Big time. And if I could just tell it the way it is, he was really an up and out. Big time. Made all kinds of money, ran corporations, coach, professional, baseball, college, I'm sorry, college, baseball, he's really an up and out. For, for him to come down where we are is a different. Okay, so here he is with this and thinking, now, I don't want to trust any charity to help me. And guess what happened? God opened the doors. Or, boy, God did open open the door. That's a fact. Uh, you know, when I first I had an umbilical hernia, and it really got worse over the course of about two years. And when I first was uh, talking with Pastor Walt about it, uh, he made some suggestions that, that I wasn't, that my pride, in retrospect, uh, prevented me from pursuing. And but I'm here to tell you, when it gets bad enough, yeah, and, uh, all my pride. Yeah, you know, it, I just, well, I'll tell you, no one's ever been happier to get cut on than I was. Uh, but I ran across a physician in town, Dr. Friend, uh, Francisco Rodriguez, and he has a charity, a surgical charity. And very, very, uh, I, I started to use the word coincidence, certainly that's not the right word for what we believe, but uh, this gentleman actually performed a, uh, a procedure on Pastor Wall also operated a few years ago on this lane. And uh, he had a he has a charity whereby he takes people that cannot afford to have that kind of medical care. This was a, a twenty to thirty thousand dollar procedure. I was a little only about twenty to thirty thousand dollars short. <laughs> you know, and uh, so you know there's there's no way uh, like this gentleman that just spoke, you know, I access those kinds of things uh, were not available to me. And uh, of course, I, I didn't really expect the, the government to take care of me anyway, but I did find through God bringing this gentleman to me, someone who knew exactly what he was doing, uh, gracious enough to fund this thing for me. It wasn't just him, there was another doctor, an anesthesiologist, nurse practitioners. Uh, there were about a half a dozen medical professionals that donated their time. And uh, so, no way I'd have had this happen without the good Lord bringing it about. I'm a person who's very skeptical and practical. And uh, it's got to be, you know, God saying, this is me. <laughs> and, and, uh, so I thank him, you know, for that opportunity. And uh, I've still got a little recovery time ahead of me. But thank goodness, you know, it's taken care of. And that's the only way possible. Praise God. <laughs> Yeah, as we think about this today, Dr. Ray Rodriguez saved Louise's life. Wow. You tell me. Well, and first of all, as a preface comment, my brother died at 43 from um, um, cancer. Um, and uh, of, the, of the intestine, what do you call that? Oh, cold. Colon cancer. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank you, Bill. And and I had that in the back of my mind because I had this uh, pain <coughs> and, and, I, and the swelling and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I was in the hospital. They did all kinds of tests. They couldn't figure this out or that out. So finally they decided to exploratory. And Dr. Rodriguez said, now when you wake up, you might have a little bag in the side. And da, 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 da. I'm thinking, okay. So yeah, I'm thinking, of course, maybe I also inherited that gene for colon cancer. So. <clears throat> make a long story short, he performed the operation and come to find out my, my appendix had ruptured and had stuck to the colon causing a blockage 
and he just had to go in and clean up all the gangrene or whatever it is and took all my organs out and cleaned me up, put my organs back in and zipped me up. And uh, I'll always be grateful to Dr. Rodriguez. So when I heard that David had him as a doctor, I thought, praise God. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Gus needed him. You know, I got a praise report. No. Since I'm the pastor, sometimes I get to do things because I have that privilege of being a pastor. But I didn't write this one up. Young Ezekiel, come here. Yeah. Yeah. He came in and talked to me the other day. He said, you know, I'm a medical doctor. When he said that, I thought about Dr. Rodriguez. I thought about our family physician, Dr. Feldman, has been our doctor for many, many years. And I remember when I was growing up, playing ball, I was always in their doctor. He's sewing me up, patching me up. And I just got to thinking about what these guys have been through, how they dedicate their lives for people. I mean, they're all hours of night, and just like David is saying, be willing to give. I believe this is one of them. And let me tell you what, I got a kick out of him today. <laughs> Remember, he's in the first phase. I want you to think what I'm saying. All of us have messed up. Pressure got a hold of him and he messed up a little too. He started doing the same thing some of the rest of us have done. <laughs> Ended up here. But the first thing I want you to realize, I believe he needs a lot of respect. He's earned that respect. You say, well, well, I do, I do, I do. I believe he earned his respect. He needs us to respect him. And what really got me today, he went to work out. Yeah. And man, I'm trying, he's, he's trying, man, he's running around there now. He had that same grin on his face. <laughs> and I said, Doc, oh, yeah, he was, he was having a good time. what kind of a pres prescription do you need? <laughs> What's on your heart? Oh, I just thank God for being here. Thank God for Dream Santa. Thank God for everyone. Um, this is where it's happening for me. Everything that I've done in the past was nothing compared to what's happening here. Um, this is the first time ever in my life that I came to a place where I sat under the word and didn't have to worry about anything. Um, because I was so busy, I was a church goer, but I was so busy, I couldn't really sit down and really, you know, get this word, but this is the first time. It's happening here for me. Um, God is doing a lot for me. <laughs> but I'm glad to be here, uh, you know. I'm hoping that I'll get back to practice and also to be able to use that to help, um, you know, mission all over the world, wherever God sends me to. So I, I'm very um, hopeful. I'm very grateful. I'm, I'm very grateful for this experience. And I thank everyone. I have a few questions. Do you ever get mad? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I forget. I will. Just keep smiling. No, I, I do get mad. <laughs> <laughs> when you're going to medical school, all that pressure, doing your whatever you call it, internship, and you keep smiling, I get to see this, but what is really going on inside? Did you just learn to put on a smile, or did you? Well, um, the training requires that you. Um, just forget about who you are, forget about yourself, and just, yeah, you, you can't deal with whatever is going on in you. you. I've froze myself in terms of whatever's going on, because I have to come in the morning, I have to know all what's in this hand, yeah. and forget what's going on, I have to know that, you know, so, um, that was how the training was. I did all, I abused myself. I did abuse myself. I didn't get enough rest. Whatever it took, I did it. 
you know, I did it, you know, whatever it took. I, I don't know. It just, it just kind of got, it just, it, the way it happened, it was supposed to happen. Uh, I kept thinking, will I do that again? Will I do that again? I'm like, I don't know if I would do that again. But I think I was supposed to do that. Yeah. Yes. I was supposed to. Okay. Right. So now, you get to go from here. You know, just can you imagine just sitting back, sucking everything up, and not have to do anything? Especially when you're in high gear all the time, you know what I'm saying? Just run, 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 and pressure all the time. And trying to. I wonder how, let me ask you this. How many doctors, professional people, do you think might be functional drug addicts, alcoholics? The, um, the statistics is. Um it's like 20% higher than the general population. What? Yeah, it is in, in the medical. It is. Yeah, it is. But um, they, they keep it kind of quiet, yeah. They catch you early, they will uh, rehabilitate you. It's very expensive. They rehabilitate you and keep it very private. Don't let patients know that. All the public know that. But mine got out. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? You know you what? You know what God says, Doc? No, I'm a preacher. He says all things work together for the good. Maybe you know He wanted to expose you, so you'd have to deal with it. Yeah. And say, you know what? You're gonna have to humble yourself and go to church on the street. <laughs> And put up with all those are I mean, I didn't say that, did I? They told me to come to church on the street. I didn't like it. I said, church on the street? Somebody told me uh, at a park. Someone told me at a park. And I said, church on the street? No. No, that's, that, that was my, uh, you know, initial reaction. I didn't, uh, can I call the Dream Center? Just I gotta go through the mission. So, <laughs> but this is the best thing that happened to me. <laughs> Give us one of those runs like Drop Dead Fred's got you doing. <laughs> You know, let me tell you something. I got nothing very respectful about it. Nothing very respectful about Well, he was running today. I came to tell you, he was just running and running. Well, so I, you know what I really believe? Now, we're all part of the family. We're all part of a family. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, he said brother and sister in Christ. You know what I would suggest many of you do? If you get to know him, he's got a lot of wisdom. Maybe he can talk, help you, give you some ideas about your aches and pains, both physically and spiritually and mentally. No, he can't practice medicine because he lost his right now. And so, but just get to know him. I, I want to get to know him. Or he is quite a character. That's, I don't know, you call him, I'll call him Dr. Character. God bless you. Amen. Let's give a little bit of a good Pastor Ken. It was 46 hours or something. Would you take the offering if you can remember how to do it?